Hi, I'm Jeff Lance from Picasso Piano Academy. Piano mastery, how do you get it? Where do you have to go? What do you have to do? Is there a magic key? Um, some sort of singular thing that you could do that will set you on the path to piano mastery? And I say there is. But first, before we get to that, there are three things that you need to know if you want to go that path to piano mastery. One thing is technique. One is theory. And one is ear training. These are the three pillars to success as a pianist. Technique, what's that? That is all things to do with the physical process of playing piano. It's playing piano uh, correctly so that over a lifetime you don't develop bad habits and possibly hurt your body with re repetitive stress disorders. This would be anything from, you know, leaning over like this when you're playing piano or it would be like having tight shoulders or whatever. Over a lifetime of playing, you could develop problems. So one thing about technique is just a way to do it safely over a lifetime. But the other part, equally as important, is playing effortlessly. And whether it's a fast passage or slow passage or in between or whatever, um, it, it allows you to play fast effortlessly. But, but uh, good technique also allows you to play anything with less effort. Um, good technique involves things like not moving body parts or not tensing muscles that don't have to be tensed. Okay, so that's just a little bit about technique. Now, what about theory? Theory is the, all the intellectual things about piano. It's understanding scales and chords and arpeggios and... Uh, counting and, and rhythm and stuff like that. It's all the, the intellectual part. Uh, equally as important. Um, and the third thing is ear training. Some people uh, don't know what ear training is. It's just simply the ability to be able to hear something and play it. You know, whether it's melodies or chords or scales or arpeggios. Uh, and also including hearing rhythms and be able to duplicate rhythms. And that, that also means not just hearing something on the outside, uh, it, but it's hearing stuff inside of our head. I'm sure that most of you looking right now that are watching this video, you get music in your head. And uh, to, the develop, to, the, to the degree that you develop your ear training, that's how you're going to get it out so that the world can hear it. Now, I think they should all be balanced. And what I mean is, let's say you got great shops. You could play really fast, you know. You got all that going, but you don't have a good ear. So you're on stage, and the guitar player, you know, takes, you know, eight counts and does a real cool riff. Wouldn't it be nice if you knew what he just played so you could pair it back at him and make it a little bit, you know, twist it up a little bit and make it interesting for him? Or, or if you're just getting ready to solo and you want to do something cool, and if you hear something cool in your head, you could have the best chops in the world, but if you don't know how to play what you're hearing, you know, it's going to be a lost opportunity. And, uh, and as far as theory goes, um, it really helps in the, in the um, learning of a song to understand what you're doing. You know, sometimes, you know, if, 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 if a casual listener is, is watching you play a piece of music, the casual listener might go, how do, how do you learn that? Or even as a student, how do you learn it? You learn all those notes. You've got pages and pages of notes, if it's a classical piece or some modern stuff that's written out. Well, if you understand theory, you can break it down and you can understand. Um, you can understand, and it will make learning easier. Understanding theory allows you to know which notes to put with which chords and how to assemble things together in a way that's pleasing to our ears. Uh, and if you know how to do that, then you can start bending theory and bending all these things to make them kind of twangy for effect also. Um, it's kind of like, uh, I've always felt like um, Salvador Dali uh, was a great surrealistic painter, but he started out as a realist. He understood how to paint something perfectly. So when Salvador Dali, you know, paints music notes with, timepieces melting in the sun uh, that's totally surrealistic or, or whatever he does, you know that he's got the talent to do things realistically, but he chose to go another way. But 
you know, uh, you know, a painting theory, I'm sure, is much like music theory. There's things that work, there's things that don't. There are things that are fun to look at visually, and there's things that are fun to listen to uh, with our ears. Anyway, so these are the three pillars, and if you develop them evenly, you're going to have the best chance to have the straightest shot, to have the most efficient path towards music mastery, should you choose you want that. Now, the master key. What do you need to know? Is there a singular thing that you can work on that will allow you, that will help you learn all three of these? And yes, there is. Here it is. Da-da! Major scales, folks. I know that's not what some of you wanted to hear. The starting point, the birth of your rocketing towards success as a pianist is right there. So why is it so important to learn scales? And how can learning scales help all three of these disciplines? Okay, I'm going to try and do a real quick, real broad um, example here. First of all, once you learn a scale, um, let's say D scale. Once you know those notes, then you can play the first and second notes of that scale together as an interval of a major second. What if I play the first and the third note of the D major scale together? That's an interval of a major third. So on and so forth. And once you understand intervals based on scales, now you can build chords. Let's say major triad. The first, third, and fifth note of any major scale. We'll stick with D. One, two, three, four, five. Major triad. Once you know and especially once you know all 12 scales, it's so easy to be able to define and play chords because the background, the knowledge that you need to know, the whole structure behind understanding chords is major scales because that's how it works. Is, is the first, fifth, no, the first, third, fifth, and seventh note of any major scale makes a certain chord called a major, major seventh so on and so forth. It gets deep. But know your scales, build chords. And not only that, <laughs> um, every chord that you're playing has a scale that goes with it. Uh, at, 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 in most music, especially modern music, you know, pop, rock, country, jazz, reggae, all that stuff, there's usually at any one point in a song, there's a predominant chord, a prevailing chord. And every chord has a set of notes, in other words, a scale, a right and perfect scale that could, could be played, to be t used to se select notes for improvising a solo or to select notes from just different voicings. There's, there's order and there's, um, there's order. And it makes sense. So you know your scales. You can put together music. You know how to put it together, whether you're an accompanist, whether you're a composer, um, whether you're improvising a solo, whatever it is. To understand theory is to, is to intellectually be in the game. Knowing your scales helps you know theory. Practicing your scales with the different techniques that I show you develops your technique while you're learning scales. And once you know the degrees of the scale, once you get real good at hearing a chord and knowing what the first and the third and the fifth degree of the chord is, that's the beginning of ear training. Uh, you know, oh, say, can you see? Okay, that, okay. So, oh, say, that's five, three, one. It's the first, it's the fifth note, the third note, and the first note of a B flat major scale. B flat. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, say, can you see? Going up to the octave there. It's the beginning of hearing things and knowing what they are. Now, I don't have perfect pitch per se. If you have perfect pitch, I don't know, move on to the next part of the tape because anything you hear, you know. I have a very developed sense of relative pitch. As long as I know what key we're in, I can sing the fifth degree. I can, I can, I can imagine a solo in my mind because I know that certain degrees of whatever scale are going to sound a certain way. It all starts with scales, folks. So um, 
so now I'm going to announce a new video series. It's going to be 12 scales in 12 months. And once a month, my video is going to be focusing on one of the 12 key centers. Okay, so there's 12 notes per octave. There's 12 months in a year. So over this next year, I'm going to be presenting a different scale. We'll go around the circle of fifths. And I'm going to show you how to practice them. I'm going to show you different tricks of the trade, what you can do with them. And we're going to start identifying chords. And so each study, each month, is going to be a study of one major scale. Now, 12 major scales is only a fraction of the scales there is to learn. But once you learn major scales, everything else falls in place, I guarantee you. So anybody who wants to come along with me, come along. It's, uh, it's going to be uh, next week from now a week from today, and uh, I'm going to try and get it uh, from here on out. I'm going to try and get it on the first Thursday of every month for a year. So there's four weeks to work on any scale. You can do that, okay? And uh, if you've received any kind of value at all from this video, please consider liking the video and also subscribing. It could help me. I appreciate it. Okay, so uh, the next video you're going to see is, um, is going to be C major. It's a good place to start, and we'll see you in about a week. Okay.